The question reads that uh, element X undergoes the following physical changes. Uh, so the uh, the three states, gaseous, solid and liquid and the uh, physical changes described over here. And in the first part, you have to give the scientific name for each of the numbered physical changes. So we're going to start off with the... Uh, Let's start off with uh, one. Yeah, let's find one over here. One is the change from solid to liquid. So solid to liquid is melting. Uh, whenever, so that is melting. That's easy, solid to liquid. That's melting. Uh, second, number two. Number two is the change from gas to liquid. Whenever substance changes from gas to liquid state, that's condensation. So this state is condensation. So let's... Uh, write that condensation which is which is gas to liquid similarly the third uh, uh, state uh, change change of state is from liquid to solid whenever things change from liquid to solid that is called uh, that is called liquid to solid is freezing so this is freezing so it changes from liquid to solid and then uh, number four, let's uh, find what number four is. When the solid changes directly to gas, uh, that, that change is called sublimation. So number four, number four is sublimation, a solid changing directly to gas. Now moving to the next part of the question. The next part of the question states that uh, explain why the uh, changes shown are physical changes. So the reason why they are physical changes is that no new substances are made. For example, if I if I take liquid water and I boil it, then H2O is in liquid state. And if I boil it, it changes into steam, but it's still H2O, but in gaseous state. So you're only overcoming the intermolecular forces. You're not changing the substance. You're not uh, rearranging the bonds or making something that is different. So uh, H2O remains as H2O. So no new substances are made, which is why it's called a physical change. In the next part, uh, part three, you, you're supposed to uh, tell one difference between boiling and evaporation uh, is the rate at which the process occurs. State one other difference between boiling and evaporation. Now, boiling is the change and evaporation is the change when a liquid changes to a gas. So you can think of water boiling or water evaporating. In both cases, liquid water changes into gas. Boiling, uh, when boiling happens, the reaction is very very fast all the particles they boil at the same time they try to change into gaseous state evaporation is a slow process and uh, uh, it it happens over a period of time so it it's a very gradual and slow process but the state but the change that's happening is always the same so one major change uh, difference between boiling uh, and evaporation is that boiling always happens at a fixed temperature for example water always boils at 100 degrees centigrade uh, but evaporation, on the other hand, can happen at any temperature. You throw a glass full of water, and even though it's not its uh, boiling point, but over time it's going to evaporate, even at room temperature. So, so no fixed temperature is required for evaporation to happen. Now, moving to part D, you have to describe the separation, arrangement, and motion of particles of element X in the solid state. Quickly going over kinetic particle theory first, uh, solids, the particles are all tightly packed together. In liquids, they are loosely packed, they have slight gaps. Uh, and in gases, the particles are far apart. In solids, the particles are only able to vibrate about their fixed position. They're not able to move freely or uh, they're not able to move at all. Uh, they just vibrate uh, side to side, from side to side, to and fro. And uh, liquids, the particles can slip and slide past each other. They're more energetic. They can overcome the intermolecular forces. In gases, the particles are even more energetic. The intermolecular forces are also relatively weaker. So the particles can move freely in all directions. So I've written down the separation in solids. Uh, the particles are going to be close together. They would be touching each other. They would be tightly packed. Uh, the arrangement is going to be a regular arrangement. They would be neatly stacked uh, one on top of the other. And the motion of the particles would be that they are going to vibrate about their fixed position. So this is how uh, the particles would be arranged in solid state. Going to the next part of the question, element C. Uh, element X is in group 1 metal. It burns in A to form an oxide X2O. And we have to write a chemical equation for this reaction. Now remember, uh, it's in group 1. So this is element X. It's a group 1 metal. It's reacting with oxygen. It's, uh, it burns in air. 
remember o2 is the only active element in air that burns uh, the other element uh, uh, is nitrogen which is uh, relatively inert so uh, it would have no reaction so it's reacting with o2 and it's producing this compound x2 Oh, so we need to write a chemical equation. We need to balance this equation as well. So to balance this, uh, uh, the two oxygens on the left hand side. So there should be two uh, molecules of X2O. That would give me four X on the left hand side because they are two molecules of X2O. So there would be four uh, X uh, atoms. So on the left hand side, I will have four X as well.